Hi, my name is Tom Conkle. I'm a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions. And today I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the acronyms within the risk management framework. Uh, the risk management framework was is a process that was developed by NIST to help the federal government understand the risk associated with deploying information systems and programs. Uh, more information on the risk management framework and the process is available on uh, a separate webinar that we previously recorded uh, and encourage you to watch that one if you're interested in the steps. Uh, this one is specifically focused on the acronyms that are used in the process. Okay. So for those of you that have a little familiarity with the risk man management framework, you understand yeah, a lot of different acronyms, uh, very much like an alphabet soup. So we want to try to help organize the and define what the acronyms mean for you. Okay. In order to do that, we first started by categorizing the acronyms into three primary buckets. Uh, the first are just guidance and terms. The second are artifacts or uh, documents, diagrams, those things that support um, the risk management framework processes itself. And then the third and final uh, area we want to talk about are the roles or the people that are involved throughout the process. Okay, so to just get started, uh, we'll just start here with the guidance and term acronyms uh, in alphabetical order. And we see first off, we have authorization to operate or ATO. And ATO is typically a memorandum uh, that defines or gives an organization authority to operate their system. Uh, typically an ATO will define any parameters for that operation, such as you know if it's a pilot system that it may only operate for six months, or if it's an operational system that's supposed to long-term uh, operate for long term uh, that'll be documented in the ATO as well. Okay. Next we have the Federal Information Processing Standards or FIPS. Uh, FIPS are developed by NIST to help us define uh, ways in which we can meet or obtain specific information technology topics. Uh, most commonly, uh, you may have heard of FIPS 199. FIPS 199 is the standard for security categorization of federal information and information systems. And it is the document that helps us determine uh, whether a system is going to be low, moderate, or high baseline. Uh, another common FIPS document is FIPS 140. FIPS 140 is, are the security requirements for cryptographic modules. Uh, there are many other FIPS, but FIPS are just general standards that are developed by NIST uh, for, for various information technology topics. Next, we have the Federal Information Security Modernization Act, or FISMA. Uh, FISMA is the law that actually establishes the requirement to do the RMF. Um, basically, it's what makes the federal government have to go through the process for the RMF uh, to understand the risks associated with uh, information systems and to authorize their use. Um, you may have heard FISMA as the Federal Information Security Management Act, um, because when the, law, the act first came out in 2002, uh, that's what it was referred to as was the Management Act. Uh, in 2014, when the amend, they amended FISMA, they changed the name to the Federal Information Security Modernization Act. Uh, so both are still used interchangeably today. Up next, we have RMS, RMF, or the Risk Management Framework itself. Uh, the RMF is a flexible seven-step process that helps us understand how how to define what security controls need to be implemented, implement those security controls, assess the risk associated with those security controls, and define uh, the requirements for continuing uh, to operate a system securely. Uh, and again, more information is available on the RMF video or uh, as defined in uh, SP 837 Rev 2. PII is personally identify to identifiable information or any information that helps us identify a specific individual. Um, some of the examples that you see here include you know, name, birth date, passport, number, um, but typically this is the type of information that we want to keep confidential um, so that uh, we can protect individuals' identities. Okay. The last term that we have here is SCA or security control assessment. Security control assessment is actually step four of the risk management framework uh, and it is used to assess the security controls of a information system or program. 
Next, we have the artifacts. Uh, again, the artifacts are those documents pro, uh, or uh, so things that we need to support the risk management framework uh, process itself. Again, alphabetic order, we'll start here with BIA or business impact analysis. Uh, basically, uh, BIA is the analysis that's done to understand the business purpose of a system or a program that's being implemented so that we understand then what are the confidentiality, integrity, and availability requirements for that system. We have a contingency plan. Contingency plan is a plan or a tool that we can use to help manage uh, our information system if something happens. Uh, if we lose a database, right? What is our contingency? Do we have a backup database um, for it? Do we have a hot spare that we can swap in? Um, but the contingency plan defines how are we going to maintain uh, the operations of our systems in the event something happens. And an incident response plan, again, is another tool that helps us understand how are we going to respond to cyber incidents, uh, whether that is uh, a data breach or uh, someone tripping over a power cable and losing access to a server, right? How do we respond to that? It helps us define how we're going to you know, contain an incident, um, make sure that uh, it doesn't spread throughout the information system, how we get rid of, you know, if there's malware in the system, how we get rid of it, and then how we recover the system in of itself. Um, some incident response plans do have uh, what are referred to as plays within them, and there are specific ways to address very specific types of incidents. Um, for example, an organization might have a, a play for addressing phishing emails so that whenever they're notified of one of their uh, members being phished, uh, they know exactly what to do and how they're going to respond to that phish and make sure they contain it uh, and make sure that people don't uh, click on any malicious links or anything that might have been in the email. Next, we have the plan of action and milestones, uh, or POAM. A POAM is a management tool that is used to help us track improvements within a cybersecurity program. Um, so it documents what needs to be, what security controls need to implement, be implemented, the timeline for implementing, who's maybe responsible for implementing them, the resources necessary. Um, basically, a POAM is a program management tool um, that is used, basically, you know. Uh, and develop for an organization to help them track security improvements and make sure that they are properly implemented. A privacy input impact assessment uh, is just that. It's an assessment of the privacy uh, requirements for a system. So again, uh, back to PII uh, and the personally identifiable information, we have that type of information in the system. We need to understand what type of information we have, what kind of damage can happen uh, if that identifiable information gets out, uh, and therefore we can use a PII, PIA to help us assign uh, the types of security controls that need to be in place to protect that PII. Next up, we have a security assessment plan. Security assessment plan is um, a test plan that's used to help determine how are we going to test the security controls of the system uh, itself. Um, it's typically uh, written using 853A, which defines the guidelines uh, for how to test the security controls within the, as a, uh, the special publication 853 security control catalog itself. Okay. The SAR or the Security Assessment Report is the results of conducting the security assessment. So after we've completed a security assessment, um, a security assessment report is uh, drafted to define uh, the results of the testing, which controls are at, were met, which ones may be partially met, uh, which ones were not met at all. And for those that were either partially met or not met, we take, typically find recommendations on how we can uh, correct uh, the defici deficiency in the security program itself. And then finally, we have here a system security plan. A system security plan is a formal document that defines how we are implementing the security controls within our system. So it lists each of the security controls uh, assigned to the system and uh, how they've been implemented uh, or planned to be implemented or uh, how they're inherited. Um, for example, if you're using a cloud service provider, uh, you may in inherit uh, the physical security of their data center itself, but that would be defined in the SSP. So those are the artifacts um, that are 
some of the key artifacts used within the risk management framework, and then finally we have roles. The first role here is the authorizing official. Authorizing officials, or AOs, are senior officials within the organization that are responsible for issuing the ATL. Um, so these are the people with the authority to either authorize systems to operate or deny them from operations if the risk is deemed unacceptable um, to the organization uh, because security controls may not be in place, for example. But an, EO, e, an AO is typically that senior official that makes that determination. And then Information System Security Engineer, or ISSI. ISSIs are the engineers that are responsible for helping us understand how security controls should be implemented within the system. Uh, ISSIs should be engaged very early in the process so that we can help define the security requirements and the approach for implementing them as the system is being defined uh, and we're making those build decisions early in the process. ISSIs are uh, very vital to help uh, make sure that the controls are put in place effectively. Um, as the system's being developed. Up next, we have the Information System Security Officer, uh, or ISO. And ISO is responsible for uh, documenting and defining the security capabilities uh, within the information system or security program. Typically, the ISO is responsible for the SSP. Um, they'll draft it as the system's being developed. They'll maintain it as the system uh, goes through changes uh, and helps communicate the security expectations and requirements of the system itself. Next, we have system administrator. System administrator is the individuals that are responsible for installing, maintaining, and operating our information systems, whether uh, it's a database, whether it's an infrastructure component um, or capability, um, but they're typically privileged users that have the ability to um, operate, install software uh, within the system. And then lastly, here we have a security control assessors. Um, so security control assessors are those people that are responsible for performing security assessments on the system to make sure that the security capabilities are appropriately implemented. Uh, previously, we talked about an SEA as being a security control assessment. So the, the acronym is used twice in two different ways. One is the assessment and one is the assessor or the person that's performing the assessment. Uh, typically, the people performing the assessment it will be independent from the organizations that's deploying it, just so that we make sure that we have that separation uh, and no conflict of interest as the system is being tested. Okay, so there's some key highlights of the different acronyms within the risk management framework uh, that you will hear. And then also wanted to leave you uh, with some resources um, to further help you understand the risk management framework and other uh, cybersecurity requirements. Um, first we have here is the Optic Resource homepage uh, where we have several uh, webinars to include one on the risk management framework and the SSP to go in further detail of what an SSP is, how it's created um, and maintained. And then we also have several different types of templates uh, to help you get started within uh, your security program. Um, we've also listed here a couple industry standards that help uh, will further define some of the acronyms and the terms. Obviously, 837 uh, listed there first uh, is the risk management framework. Um, that's the document that NIST has developed to help us understand all of the steps and the approach for implementing those steps within the RMF. Uh, then we have the security control catalog at 853 and the assessment approach from uh, 853A. And then finally, uh, another acronym that we haven't talked about is the CSRC, or the Computer Security Resource Center at NIST. Uh, this is where all of the special publications, um, specifically the 800 series dealing with cybersecurity, are posted as well as a glossary of terms um, for additional acronyms and terms that are uh, used within the process. Uh, and again, my name is Tom Conkle, cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions, and my email address is there. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. All right, thank you.